In this lesson, we'll be learning to set up the basic V-Ray parameters. Now, in the workflow that I am used to doing, the actual rendering phase of my workflow is quite minimal. So you'll see that I change very few things compared to the basic default V-Ray setup. And you'll see that the renders are going to be processed very, very quickly. So to get started, you can hit F10 on your keyboard or otherwise click the render setup button on the top right. And with the basic setup right now, that what we have in front of us is as it arrives in V-Ray by default. So nothing has been changed yet. So starting at top to bottom, I'm just going to run through things quite quickly. I'm not going to harbor on any details or explanations. You can go into the V-Ray manual if you would like a detailed explanation of what each one of the options means. So first of all, I start off by using the adaptive DMC. Second of all, I uncheck the anti-aliasing filter just to keep things moving quickly in the beginning since ticking the anti-aliasing filter is a little bit like doubling your pixel size. So it's going to really slow things down quite a lot. In terms of size, I generally like to have quite a wide proportion. It's a good idea to ask your clients what the format is that they are going to be printing on if you are doing images directly for a particular purpose. So always try to get the size and especially this, uh, the resolution to that scale of what is required. So let's get started with a very low scale. We're going to choose 1200 by 600. And I'm just going to tweak this slightly to 1280 by 720 so that we get a video standard proportion, in other words, a TV aspect ratio. So then in V-Ray, I'm going to carry on down where I was before. And I'm not going to worry about any of these settings. I generally skip right over them just to speed up the setup process as well. And here I check the GI environment and the reflection. Generally, I don't like to have too much color in the GI environment. So I just pull this down ever so slightly to get a slightly whiter look to that. Under color mapping, the only thing to really make sure that you have on is your sub-pixel mapping. Uh, here, some people like to use the exponential, although I see not too much difference, so I just keep it at the default linear. Here, make sure that you turn on your GI, and the method that I use most of the time is iridescence or irradiance and light cache. Then I set up things to be low, show calculation, and I leave the rest as per is, as per default, just as it is. Then under light cache, I drop these values down to their bare minimum, so 0 0.05, 500 subdivisions. I like to see the calculation phase, and here I deactivate the filter. So in a very short amount of time, in a few seconds, we've just reduced the time of our renders quite substantially. Here, the important figure is your noise threshold. Uh, generally, you can use 0.01 only for quite crude renders, otherwise 0.05 for the average render and 0.001 for your better resolution and final production. The next important figure here is your global subdivisions multiplier. This will basically have a multiplying factor over every single subdivision that you have over all of your lights, your textures, uh, and every other instance where you do have a subdivision. So if you are in a very big rush, you can drop this down to 0.5 or 0.4 or 0.6, etc. And you can really uh, speed up a lot of your renders. Just remember that those renders are going to be very draft and you're not going to be able to present them generally to a client. Next in the V-Ray system box, the one to check here is your dynamic memory limit. You want to have this to about 60 to 80% of your available RAM in your machine. So you can just go and push that up to whatever size you have in your machine particularly. The next one that I like to usually change is the triangulation region sequence. I prefer to have either top, bottom, or left to right. The triangulation works well because it can estimate the total time of your render quite precisely. But the disadvantage is that if you want to stop your render halfway, you can't exactly just restart a render. In other words, if you choose a region of a render of an image to render, it's very difficult to do it with triangulation. So therefore, I like to do it left to right, and therefore I'm rendering bands that are going vertically. Then the last one, I generally like to uncheck the V-Ray log. Uh, it's a good idea to have it on in the first instance or so, just so that you can see if there are any errors. Otherwise, if you're quite confident that your scenes are not producing any errors, you can just untick it and you won't have to constantly close down that box. 
very much the rest of the other options I generally try to leave. There is also the option of choosing the default geometry. You can go read up about this. This course isn't really too much about render setup or rendering itself. It's more a modeling course and a architectural workflow. So if you are having problems with running out of memory, if, you're, if your system is crashing, then you definitely want to have a look at the way that the geometry loads into your scene. So you can read up about all of those things. The other thing that you can do if you are crashing is just reduce this size uh, and definitely one of the best recommendations that I have if your system is crashing to reduce your area to a region and then just render small portions of your scene at a time and then just go and stitch that together in Photoshop. So I'm sure that most of the settings that we've done right now will allow us to do a basic test. So the next thing we want to do in our scene is to go and add a V-Ray camera. So in our top view, let's just go and do that. I generally add all my cameras and lights onto the zero default layer. You can obviously create a separate layer for that if you choose. And I'm going to now go down into V-Ray, create a V-Ray Sun, and we're also going to then create a V-Ray camera. So the V-Ray Sun, I'm going to just start by dragging it in. I'm not going to necessarily choose a environment map since I'd like to do something different for the environment. And then in my front view, I'm just going to move the sun slightly upwards, select the light target by right clicking. And I'm just going to leave this I think here should be fine. Before I set up the settings for that light, I'm just going to add a camera in. So same thing here, V-Ray physical camera, and we're just going to create a simple V-Ray cam. I'm going to move it up slightly, right click, select the target, move that up slightly, and then you can press C with the camera selected and you will then be able to go into that view. If you want to turn your lighting on and off, just Control L, that will toggle that to be on and off. And then I generally use these uh, buttons down below, so you can zoom out and you can change your angle. So that is the the easiest way to move around your scene. Next, let's go and set up our sun that we've just created. The settings that I like to use in particular are, first of all, I take the size multiplier, I double it to two. This is going to make the shadows slightly softer. So remember, depending on the time of the day, sometimes you will want to have soft shadows, other times you do want to get a hard outline. The next one is, to set up the shadow subdivisions. So for your very draft renders, we can leave it at three. And then otherwise, if your soft shadows, especially when you increase this multiplier, if your soft shadows are producing a grainy effect, just increase this subdivision multiplier to 8, 12, 16, 32, just continue until you get the result that you're looking for. Then the most important one here is the intensity multiplier. There are certain people that like to keep this at one and then manually change or counteract that high intensity with settings in their camera. I'm somebody who likes to put a very low figure in there, so a, a hundredth, in other words, 0 0.01, and then I do the rest in the camera. So the basic camera settings that we're going to use, I'm just going to scroll from top to bottom. First of all, I'm going to change my white balance to be a neutral balance and then I'm going to add color to it only if I feel that I absolutely need to within my renders. Second one is I'm going to change my shutter speed to be 15. I generally use a figure of between 5 and 20 and then for the ISO I generally use a figure of 200. Then the one that I will use or at least edit most of the time is the shutter speed. So similar to when I take photos with my real camera I generally have a set ISO and then you're busy rolling the dial up and down on your camera so that'll be changing the shutter speed. So everything else I leave as per default for my default for my draft renders and now we can go into our camera view and we can start to render those scenes. So I'm going to just press pause here and we'll just have a look at what our first initial render looks like. So here's our render, color and all. So far we haven't added any textures or any other detail. So everything is purely straight out of Max, a 
default color. And at least we know now that the scene is rendering, so we know that that's fine. We know that we have a little bit of sun, but we need to increase it. So before we make any changes to our camera or our lighting or environment, let's go first of all and add some default materials onto the model. And this is what we're going to do in the next lesson.